We're all often busy during the day. We've got jobs, we've got school, we've got families, we've got obligations. So, some of us play games after hours. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 Confessions of a Late Night Gamer. At number 10, the fear of getting caught is real. Unless you're living alone or sharing an apartment with a like-minded night owl, there's always the fear in the back of your mind of getting caught when you're up late gaming. It's unavoidable. First your parents, then your roommate, who, by the way, has to get up at 5 a.m. for their construction job. He says he's not mad, but he's definitely kind of pissed off. Then your spouse or your kids, because you definitely don't want to wake them up. Or let's say you live with your elderly parents, for instance, they sleep from 8 p.m. and get all pissy if a pillow falls on the floor. The fear of getting caught gaming late at night never ends for a lot of people. Like Everything just sounds louder late at night when you're trying to game, and it drives you crazy like a console or a pc they sound like jumbo jets the fan revs up and it's like are we taking off using a mouse isn't loud during the day when things are going on but playing the dark you sound like one of the clicker monsters in last of us it's click 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 except you're the one who gets their throat ripped out when you get caught and let's say you use a mechanical keyboard <laughs> You're already dead. Nobody's sleeping through that. Now, we've all been there, listening for any creaks in the floorboard or squeaks in the door hinges being open, whatever. Anytime you hear something, you freeze like you're a squirrel seeing a dog come walking by, and you just stop everything until the sound passes. This is where the real horror starts, though. You think you're safe, and you start gaming without concern, only to realize that your parents or your spouse are just standing right there. Mr. X has nothing on that. Anyone who's been gaming long enough at night starts to get some kind of sixth sense after a while a spidey sense, if you will, where they just know something's about to go down, so they peace out. You are Solid Snake, Sam Fisher, or one of the hundred guys from Assassin's Creed combined into one guy when you shut the system down and go to bed only for your parents to check in the room a minute or two later. That is S-rank stealth right there. At number 9, basically getting drunk off of a lack of sleep. You know what I'm talking about. You're up super late, you're playing games, you go into this weird trance, you lose all the ability to speak normally, and you go into the laugh at everything mode. I mean, everybody has a different name for it. Late night loopiness, the giggles, whatever. But everybody starts doing it eventually. And there's a cycle to late night gaming. You start off alert, ready to go. After a few hours, you get super sleepy. And if you manage to somehow power through that, that's when you get to this stage, where you become weirdly alert and sensitive. Maybe it's adrenaline, maybe it's the third can of Red Bull, I don't know. Whatever it is, it messes you up. Your senses are all heightened, you feel your skin tingling, and you get this hyper-awareness where you feel your heart beating and stuff. You'd think that being more awake would improve your gameplay. Mm -mm. It doesn't actually make that much of a difference. It's actually like you're still half asleep. You're just more aware of being half asleep. Like you're awake, but your reflexes and reaction times are still as bad as if you were dragging ass, because you technically are. It's, it's an uncanny feeling for sure. If there's anyone else around and you're doing some late night multiplayer or raiding, then they're probably all feeling the same way. And that's when conversation starts getting weird. Everyone's slurring words and giggling like fools because their brains are starting to shut down. It's like a collective manic episode where nothing makes sense at all, but it's really, really funny. If some third party was listening, they probably think you were all high as a kite or totally insane. But no, you're just gaming at night. It screws with your head. And number eight is Unamas aka one more syndrome you know exactly what we're talking about with this you're playing a game you get to some cinematic event you're invested and you want to keep going on it's 10 p.m you got plenty of time so sure let's just keep playing for one more level then you get to the end it's like damn it's midnight better go to bed eh, but first let's see what this next level looks like and you just keep going and suddenly you hear birds chirping and the sun is coming up we call it one more syndrome and it's something every gamer worth their salt gets gripped by from time to time it doesn't have to be a single player game or anything either it can be one more more multiplayer game, one more roguelike run, one more turn in a 4X game. It actually doesn't really matter, but the feeling does. You're invested. The game gets its hooks in you, and that can make time fly like nothing else. Not every game is like that. It takes a special game to come around and really grab you, but when they do, they really pull you in. You want to keep exploring, you want to keep up a winning streak, or whatever, and that means you got to keep playing. It's especially bad when you're right at the end of a game and it just keeps going. Like, I'm all for a game that goes past the point where when you think it's supposed to end. Sometimes that's a cool surprise, but when it's 2 a.m. and you're like, all right, um, be done. I am still awake at 2 a.m. and I don't want to be. That's when it becomes a problem. Or hell, when you do get to the ending and the credits just go on and on and on and you don't want to hit skip because you're afraid you're going to skip a post credit scene or something. I mean, you don't know if there's going to be one there, but the credits just never stop. They've been playing for like 20 minutes now. Is it looping? I can't tell. I'm in a state, remember? <laughs> 
On top of the one more syndrome, I've also got the late night loopiness, so I'm not entirely alert. I just want to see if there's something after the credits, and the game is not making it easy. Just want to go to sleep, but I gotta stay awake for these 40 minutes of Ubisoft game credits, just to see a 5 second teaser for something that probably won't get followed up on in the next game anyway. And number seven, when you want to go to sleep, but you end up using your phone for hours instead. So you turn off your gaming system or PC at a semi-reasonable time, fully expecting to get a night's sleep. See, you can be responsible. No late night gaming session for me. Need to be up bright and early. So, you know, turn on the phone, look for something to watch to drift off to sleep, and an hour becomes two hours, which three hours, then four hours, and it never ends. Doesn't have to be YouTube. Could be doom scrolling on Twitter, watching TikToks, using forums, checking IRC, or Discord if you, you know, exist in the present time. Or maybe you bought the Angry Birds remaster. I don't know. You're trying to sleep. You don't want to be up all night gaming, but you kind of just substituted one thing for another. It's almost worse, too. Like, if you had stayed up, you could have made some progress in that game or earned some levels or something. But instead, you end up scrolling YouTube for hours and not even really watching anything. Just time wasted. Nothing to show for it. Of course, non-gamers would say that either activity is a waste of time, but we know better. For some of us, being a late night gamer is less of a conscious choice and more a of life. Sometimes you just can't sleep even when you really, really want to. And number six, when you realize you have to go to work or school in a few hours and you got to decide if you're going to get a few hours of sleep or just power through it. Everyone who games late into the night eventually hits the threshold point where you have to decide. Are you going to try and get three hours of sleep now or are you just going to muscle through and keep gaming all night and deal with the consequences later? It's a decision that leaves us sweating bullets because you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You either sleep for a few hours, which already isn't guaranteed, like you might not be able to sleep anyway, or you just stay up and risk feeling miserable for the rest of the day. This is the moment when you got all the equations and algebra floating around in your head because there's some real mental math you've got to figure out. Or is it mental gymnastics? I don't know. Either way, it's got to be done fast. Is sleeping going to even do any good? I mean, yeah, it will. But when you're in the middle of a game, the answer doesn't feel that obvious. Also, three hours of sleep, while definitely better than zero hours of sleep, doesn't make you not feel like ass. And and the real danger is that if you do choose to go to sleep, you may not wake up. Like, an alarm does way less at three hours of sleep than it does at eight. I will tell you that right now. So now you're tired and late when you go to school or work, which only makes you more miserable than if you just stayed awake. So you stay up all night and go to school or work and try to play it cool, but everybody can tell. Your bloodshot eyes and corpse-like appearance give it away every time. Now you have to get a drug test because your job thinks you're doping, but you're clean, you're not high, unless you can get high on gaming, then you're very high, but you're not high because that's not real. And number five, when you start seeing things and having weird messed up dreams from gaming. It's inevitable. Stay up late enough while gaming and you start getting paranoid. Not just the standard afraid you'll wake somebody up paranoid. I'm talking more of an afraid the events of the ring might actually happen style paranoid. At a certain point, it just starts getting very weird and irrational. Like you're afraid a dead-eyed oblivion NPC is going to sneak up on you or something. There's also the normal visions you get from staring at a bright screen too long. Those little weird flashing lights you see in your eyes that almost look 3D but aren't. Then there's the advanced visions where you're practically lucidly dreaming and you start seeing liquors appear in the corner of your eye and then Luigi is floating over your bed giving you the death stare or something. It's worse when you're kind of half asleep and your dreams start mixing with whatever you're actually doing. It gets especially weird when you're playing some game that already feels like a nightmare. Like for some reason any old PS1 games that, you know that weird polygon and texture distortion that is inherent in all the PlayStation games? I guess the garbled pixels and weird darkness of those games just set off the nightmare sensors in my brain or something. But play any PS1 game long enough and late enough and suddenly you start dreaming about like Duke Nukem dying from a gunshot wound while making baby crying sounds. And you try to give him a med pack but it doesn't do anything because it's just a bunch of pixels. It really depends on who you are though. If you're the type that gets weird dreams, then any amount of late night gaming of any kind is going to end up with some permanent psychic damage. Uh, or at least a weird nightmare or two.
And number four, learning to open and close things stealthily by making the least noise. Late night gaming requires a certain set of skills, and we've covered a lot of those pretty extensively already. Stuff like creeping around the house, avoiding the spots where the floor creaks, peeing on the side of the toilet bowl so it makes less noise. But those are just a few things you do to avoid waking up parents, spouses, children, etc. when you're trying to game late at night. Getting through doors, particularly, isn't easy. Those things can be so noisy, so you have to turn the knob all the way so the latch doesn't make any noise, then slowly open the door so the hinges don't squeak, and then slowly, very slowly close the door again, making sure you still have the knob turned so you don't make the big clicking sound when you put the door back into place. Late night snacking is no easier. You really have to learn when and how to use the microwave so it makes the least amount of noise. Some people are lucky and have a machine that lets you mute all the sounds, but if you're a dumb kid that doesn't know any better or just aren't lucky enough to have a decent machine, your only option is to mash those keys so they at least don't make as much sound as they normally would. Of course, you've also got to cancel the timer before the alarm goes off because the baby hates that thing. It doesn't even end with the pregame stuff. While you're playing, you always have to look for ways to make less noise. Like if you've got headphones, you can keep them down and play with one side off your ear so you can listen and make sure nobody else is awake. Or if you don't even have some headphones, you can turn the volume almost all the way down and sit as close to the TV as possible. That was my strategy and it worked about 50% of the time. Like headphones are the better option, period. It gets at night when you notice just how noisy a controller can be. But even then there's ways to keep it down so you don't press hard on the face buttons and you go easy on the stick so it doesn't clack around as much. At least with a phone using touch controls is relatively silent. But if you're trying to play a late night game with a controller, it's going to take some finesse to keep from making too much noise. And number three is learning to navigate your house with your lights off. This is max level stealth right here, the boss extreme Iron Man impossible mode. If you were a kid before smartphones, this was the default option, especially when it, you had to sneak into the family room or the living room to use the only TV in the house. Even if you did have a TV hooked up in your room, you still had to sneak around in the dark to get to the kitchen for some late night snacking or a bathroom break. And that meant navigating the halls of the house until darkness. You gotta be very quiet and still somehow get around an inky sea of blood blackness. Like Sam Fisher and Solid Snake didn't have to deal with that. They have night vision goggles. But all you get is a little baby night light in the hall and some moonlight coming in from the stairway or wherever the window is. So you either memorize your house, you know all the spots, your brother left his toys, so you're not slipping down the stairs on a Tonka truck, or you do that old pirate trick of closing one eye in the light and then just using that so you adjust to the darkness faster. It's like that cave part in Metal Gear Solid 3. You eventually start to see things, but you just have to get your eyes used to the darkness. Do this stuff enough and your Vin Diesel is Riddick. You're more dangerous in the darkness than you are in the light. Or you could just use a flashlight like on your smartphone. That also works. And number two, when you're so tired but you can't save and you just have to muscle through, but your skill level's shot and your reflexes are just gone, so you just get worse and worse and end up in a worse place than when you started. This one is just death and the absolute worst part of late night gaming. Stay up late enough and no matter how many Red Bulls you drink, no matter how much coffee you have, or however many sodas you've gone through, eventually your body just starts to shut down from lack of sleep and your motor functions just suffer from there. So your kill death ratio starts to drop, you start making stupid mistakes, nothing comes together. It's especially bad when you're in a do or die situation, like you're in a raid and a team is depending on you, but your body is failing in real time, so there's only so much you can do. You're the last guy down and it's up to you to take on the raid boss and it's 4 a.m. and everyone's already losing their minds, but you've got to pull this one out, except you can't. You just can't fight nature. Uh, you might as well be trying to fist fight a mountain. It's just not happening. And all that progress just poof up in smoke. Or you finally made it to a tough boss and you really want to beat him. Everything goes pretty good the first time through. You get him mostly dead. So just one more go around should be enough to put this one in the bag. But no, you lose again and again and again. What was supposed to take a few minutes tops balloons into a multiple hour late night session that ends on an inconclusive note. The worst part is you sleep on it, you try again later and you beat it first try. It's like, why did that give me any problems in the first place? And finally, at number one, probably the most obvious one, when you say, I'm going to sleep early tonight, and then you look outside after having played a video game for hours, and you see the sun. It's universal. We've all been there. You got a test in the morning or an important meeting to worry about, so the plan is to go to sleep early. That awesome looking game just came out, sure, but you're only going to put a few hours in, so no big deal. But then it's suddenly midnight, then it's suddenly 4 a.m., then it's suddenly 6 a.m., then it's suddenly 9 a.m., and you're hearing the bees buzzing 
buzzing and the birds chirping, and see the sun like a magnificent father so grossly incandescent. For MMO players, there just isn't a feeling more real than this one. I've been there multiple times and it's kind of mind-blowing every single time. Wasn't it like 11 p.m. just a few minutes ago? You feel like you're going crazy, but time can fly when you're gaming through the night. It's like those time lapses you see in games, but in real life. If Big Boss can smoke a cigar and 12 hours passes by in a second, you playing League of Legends can do the same thing, I guess. It's kind of crazy what the human brain is capable of. Sometimes a minute can feel like the longest time ever, and sometimes literal hours can pass without realizing it. We've all been in situations where the plan is to get some Z's, only for time to be like, I have altered my plan, pray I don't alter it further. Suddenly, it's morning, you've written a video about confessions a late night gamer might have, and you've got bloodstains on your shirt. Well, if the bloodstain thing's happening, maybe see something about that, but it's crazy how much time can pass by when you're really engrossed in a game. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks. Right here on Game Ranks.